Well, having talked about the potential top four in the Premier League at the end of the season, we didn't mention Manchester United. Mm. They're eight points away from the top four. They're level on points with Everton and Bournemouth. Should they be doing better? Yeah, obviously I think they, they should be doing better with, with the players that, that they've got. I think it's been a frustrating time for them. Um, I think the biggest problem is when you look at United at the moment is that the top teams we've just mentioned, you know their identity. More often than not, you could probably, unless it's a situation what Klopp's just had with against Burnley, more often than not, you can name their starting, maybe if it's not 11, probably 90% of the team. You can't do that with United. You can't the system, uh, the lineup that they're going to be playing as well, you know, how many changes there's going to be. And I think that's a big problem, the, the lack of continuity. And I also think that they miss they miss a player. Well, they've got the player, one matter, but they miss that type of player playing consistently who can break down um, the opposition defences who are sitting tight. You know, your, your silver types, your De Bruyne types, your Ericsson types, players that can pick that pass. They really do miss that type of player. And that's why I think it becomes difficult for, for Manchester United quite often when they're playing against the, the so-called smaller teams to actually break them down. One of the, you know, very much that, the playmaker is the key. And who is their playmaker at the moment? The one that play or has been trying to be the playmaker is Paul Pogba, and he's not a playmaker. Mm. When you saw him at Juventus, he, sat, he was playing alongside Pirlo. You know, when you, when you talk about France, he's got Griezmann in the side. At Manchester United, he's the guy that tries to create things, tries to start things, and, and he can do it every now and then, but he's not someone that you go to every time. And I think, um, you know, I've seen him play for France um, in, 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 uh, in Paris against Germany. In the first half, he was on the ball all the time. He was trying to create stuff. He was trying to pull the strings. Germany played really well. Griezmann was out of the game and France were poor. Second half, Griezmann came into the game. Paul Popper went back to doing what he does well, mm -hmm. is, which is break down play, get the ball, plays the odd, you know, diag, the odd through ball. And he can do that. But if you ask him to do it all the time, he's not someone that is, that is actually comfortable doing it, in my opinion, watching him play. I think, go on, sorry. Go on. I, th I think one of United's biggest problems is that when they start the game, I think they start games quickly because whether they're playing home or away, unless they're playing against them top teams, the onus is on them. So more often than not, the opposition are going to sit back. So I think what United try and do the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, can they get that goal, which gives them the lead, which then makes the opposition have to step up, makes them then have to come out. But it's actually worked against them at times because they've conceded a lot of first half goals, they've conceded a lot of times first as well. And that's been a real problem for them. It's 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 been a huge problem for them where they start where where they're they're starting very quickly, but they leave themselves wide open. So where they're trying to get this first goal, it actually goes against them. And as we can see here, you know, the, the first half goals that they've conceded, you know, is 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 a lot. And that's because I don't believe that they have that player that can, after 55, 60, 70 minutes, can break down the opposi opposition defence that's sitting really tight and narrow. You know, the player that can just come in and pick that pass. So therefore, I think the understanding from United is right. First 20 minutes, we go for it. Can we get that first goal? If we get that first goal, brilliant, because then we've got something to hold on to. The opposition have got to come out for us, then we can use the pace that we've got on the counter-attack. But that's not been the case. And what's happened is they've started the games quickly, but they've left themselves open, ended up going behind. We've seen it against Newcastle, against Southampton in particular, them too. They've managed to come back into the game, but it's been a real hard slog for them because of that. Pogba and Lukaku on the bench, which meant that Manchester United's bench in that two-all draw against Arsenal was more expensive than their starting eleven. What does that tell you? Uh, well, show the times in, in terms of transfer uh, fees have gone through the roof. Um, but yeah, obviously guys, you know, when you talk about Paul Pogba and Romelu Lukaku, they're clearly both players that are out of form. And I think one of the issues also is that when United do, when they have been starting games and starting games quickly, when they do lose possession, they, they're not necessarily, they're not, they're not working together. You know, there's, there's players going at different times. We talked about earlier on in the show about the fact that Liverpool are so good at pressing all together at the same time. Manchester City does it really well. Man Manchester United don't do it well. And, and they get caught out, they get played around really easy, easily. They, they lose their shape, they lose their discipline. At the back, players are exposed. There's a lot of rash decisions being made. They're conceding very sloppy goals. And then it goes all the way back. And you look at someone like David De Gea. You know, somebody who's been outstanding for them for the last six, seven years. He's been the player of the season. He's been brilliant. And now even he's now starting to, to feel the pinch. He's making mistakes that you would not, you would have not seen other than the first probably you know, 12, 18 months when he was at the club, um, he's making mistakes again. And, and that's a big concern for them because he was always that final wall that prevented uh, Manchester United uh, conceding too many goals. I think if you go back to the summer as well, and you know, 
only Manchester City conceded less than last season. And I think everybody was questioning why do they want to bring a centre-back in? Well, I think now we're starting to see why. Um, obviously, defensively, it would make them stronger, but... What, what stands out is the type of centre-back that he wanted. You know, there's talk of Harry Maguire, there's talk of Alderweireld. Two very good centre-backs, not just defensively, but can take the ball out. So if you're, if you're lacking the, the, the playmaker higher at the pitch that can't get in the team, whether Juan Mata is in the team or not, when he's not in the team, you haven't really got that player that can, that can create something. What you've got as a centre-back, we see Van Dijk do it, we see Stones do it, we see Laporte do it, we've seen David Luiz do it. You know, top-class centre-backs that are willing and happy to step out with the ball. Because what happens then, it creates a chain reaction. Because if I'm the opposition midfielder and I've got a centre-back that keeps running out, keeps running out, at some point, me as a central midfielder, I have to go out to him, I have to try and stop him. Then that may leave a Pogba free to then get on the ball. And what it creates is problems then because the, the teams that are sitting tight, tight in units, there's a knock-on effect and the domino effect is that midfielders are going to be dragged out of position. So therefore, that means that Manchester United don't have to be as open because they've got a centre-back that's willing to step out to unsettle the opposition midfield. Matic or whoever's your defensive midfielder then can sit in. And I think because of that, because they didn't get that centre-half, it's a lot easier for the opposition teams to sit and be well-drilled defensively against them. So where are they going to finish this season, then? Honestly, I would probably say... 6th, 7th. I don't think they're going to challenge the top, the top five at the moment. I think that even, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, the, the gaps aren't huge. I think it's Manchester United eight points off the top four at the moment. But the problem is, and the, the difference is from this season compared to previous seasons, Apart from Manchester United, everything's fallen. Most things have fallen to form. The big teams are beating the smaller teams. There's been very little surprises. Yeah, and the thing with Manchester United is they're not beating, they're not beating the smaller teams. Mm -hmm. so they're dropping points. So, you know, in, in, the, in the past, and they're, they're doing OK against the sides in the top six. Yeah. They're doing all right. They're playing well enough. I mean, it's, it's easy for guys, not easier, but it's easier to pick yourself up for those sort of games. The spotlight's on you. It's a massive game. I think it's the, the other games that has been a big concern for them, that the fact that they're, they're not winning games, like at Southampton or at home, you know, at home is no longer that fortress that Old Trafford used to be. I think the dynamics change as well when they're playing the big teams. <laughs> Whichever way you want to look at it, the onus probably isn't on Manchester United at the moment where they're playing the top four or five teams, so they can give up possession, they can play on the counter-attack, they don't have to have that number 10 to break through. And, and like Mark said, it, it's, it's, the, it, it's the lesser teams which are really struggling against that sit back and defend deep. How long are they from challenging for the title again? <sighs> Put me on the spot here. It's well, not. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. Football, it's it's not. Fair. It's it's not a quick fix. My own honest opinion. I think you're probably looking. It pains me to say. I think you're probably looking six or seven years. I really do. I think it's going to be. It, it's not a quick process. It's going to be a big, big building process. And this just isn't the football side. It's behind the scenes as well. It's not going to be a quick fix. They've had unbelievable success. But we've seen, you know, we saw Liverpool have great success. But after you've had the great success, after you've had all these world class players. Sometimes you then have to go back and you have to start again, and that's the situation that I see with Manchester United. I think it's going to be a slow process. Yeah, I think I think the whole recruitment side of things mm. is something that needs to be addressed massively. I mean, I know Jose Mourinho has said it publicly. I think you look at, you know, we talk off air a lot about personalities as well, and types of characters that you mm. bring into a club that have to have that that ethos, that character of a club. What's your identity? And I think Manchester United have lost that identity a little bit. They're still trying to find theirs, which. It's hard to believe that it's taken so long. Um, and I think there are players there that don't really have the right character. 